Hello everyone, Professor Toybox here along with Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey, and that means it's time for our next episode of Toybox Tutorials. As you can see, we're back in my Incredibles themed toy box, which I used for my Player Battles mini-series. We've been looking at the Path Creator tool, and last time we used it to add a car that drives around the block. I'm sure you've probably noticed that I've been busy since last time, because now I have a number of cars moving along different paths, and so it's starting to look like there might actually be people living in this city. One thing I didn't show you last time is how to connect multiple objects to the same path. I've got multiple cars going around this block over here. And so before we get to today's lesson, I wanted to show you how to do that. To save time, I'll come over here and hit the stop button and reset everything. To save time, I've already created a path around this city block here. And it starts at this point. And I've already set the speed modifier on the different points around the path the same way we did in the last episode. And so if you missed that or you need a refresher, you can watch last week's video to see how I did that. But anyway, I've got the path. And so we're going to go ahead and hook up the first of these two cars to the path. And so we'll open the logic menu for that and I'll do a new path connection. We'll come over here to the path. And connect it. And then we'll select the car open the logic menu and go into properties, toy box path, and I'm going to set this, the uh, orient along path flag to true. And now the reset point, I'm going to set this so that it's about halfway around the other side. So we'll set this to 50. It's a percentage as it indicates. And this will put the car on the opposite corner from where we are right now. And that's important because if I try to connect to this car next and that car is still sitting there, uh, that's going to be a problem. They're going to be right on top of each other. So we'd like to stagger them a little bit. And that reset point property lets you do that. So now if we come over here and oh, actually before we do that, I need to connect up these buttons to our path. So let me connect our reset button new logic connection when pressed. We'll come over to our path creator tool and I'm going to do a reset and stop. And I could do that for each car individually but there's really not any need to. It's sufficient on, in this case to do it on the path. So the other button when pressed come over to the path creator tool and we'll do a reset and play. So we've got the first car connected, and so now I can come over here to the reset button, and when I push it, that car vanishes, and it's actually moved to the reset point, which is 50% of around the path, 50% of the way around the path, and so it's sitting over here near this point. And now that gets it out of the way over here to where... I can now connect this one with a new path connection. And now you see that car jumps. If I didn't reset, if I didn't change the reset point property on the other car and hit the reset button over there to move it, these two cars would be sitting on top of each other. And it would be really difficult to select the car I wanted to modify. And so it's kind of usually good to stagger those a little bit. So on this one, again, we'll set the orient along the path property. And for this one, we can leave the reset point at zero. So now we've got two objects, two cars connected to the same path. And at this point, we can come over here and hit the play button. And now that car is moving along with the other cars on the other paths. And in a moment, the blue car should come around that corner. And there it comes. And the taxi is going around that corner. <laughs> so we've got two objects sharing the same path. So that looks pretty cool. I like that. 
I like that a lot. Okay, so today we're going to use the path creator to add some pedestrians to the sidewalks. And I'm going to show you how to do that using both a friend generator and a friendly wave generator. If you remember from uh, when we first talked about these toys in episode 13, we skipped the path creation, uh, the path connection portion of them. So I want to go back and revisit those toys to show you how to do that. And just so we're not distracted by all these cars moving around, let's go ahead and hit the reset button there. Oh, that one's off and going again. There. And <laughs> the time delay down there kicked that guy off again. Okay, <clears throat> so I've added a building front here on this building. Get into spark mode here. I've added a building front over here, and I've already dropped a path that starts at that door and ends at that one. And I've figured out the position of the points in order to make that curve around the corner properly. So that saves time, and that's all I've done with the path so far. I've also dropped down a button, a friend generator, and a friendly wave generator, as well as a locator over here. And so we're going to go ahead and start with the friend generator first. And so I'm going to come into the logic menu for that, and we'll do a new path connection. This is the portion we skipped in episode 13, because we weren't talking about paths yet. And we'll come over here to the path and select toy box path. And now we've made a connection between the friend generator and the path. And we'll come into the properties for the friend generator. And I'm going to come down to the generated friend options and open that up. And there's one property here. It's movement style. And I want the pedestrian to go from one door to the other. So we're going to come down here and do a one way and delete for the movement style. And what that means is the friend will start walking along the path. And when they reach the end, they'll be removed from the toy box. So it'll be like they went through the door. So that's really good. One thing I need to point out with the friend generator, and this is either an oversight or a bug, but if you try to connect to that locator, um, that will not work. The, the friend will, the townsperson will spawn in the toy box and they'll just wander around. They won't actually walk the path. And so with the friend generator, you can have a path connection or a locator connection. You can't have both. And that's unfortunate, because that means the friend generator has to sit out here on the sidewalk. <laughs> but that's what you have to do. So on the button, we're going to do a new logic connection when pressed. And we'll come over here. And another limitation that I want to show you is with the toy box, if we come into, well, let's see. Let's go into the uh, Incredibles drawer first. And so it might be kind of cool, since this is an Incredibles toy box, to have Rick Dicker walk the path. Um, unfortunately, he is a cast member, and cast members don't seem to want to walk paths. So if we put him in here, he'll just wander around. And so we actually need to use a townsperson. So I'm going to come up to the toy box, cost, uh, toy box drawer, and we'll just select Snow White to be our townsperson. And so now we'll come out here and let's push the button and see what happens. So now she walks over to the path and now she's actually walking the path and she's moving at a pretty brisk pace. She's in a hurry. And she gets over here to the door and now she's gone. So it kind of looks like she went into the door as I mentioned, I haven't set any properties on that path. All I did was drop it down. And so if we want to actually have them look like they're walking the path, we can come into the properties for the path creator and set the speed to something a little bit slower. Probably 50 would work best. And now, if we push the button, she moves over to the path, 
And as soon as she connects with the path, you can see her speed slows down. And now it looks like she's taking a leisurely walk. And that's good. So that's the friend generator. And as I mentioned, it's got that annoying limitation where you have to leave the friend generator sitting out in the open. And I really don't like that, but <clears throat> there's nothing you can do about that if you want to use the friend generator. So because of that, we're not going to use that. I wouldn't recommend using it. And instead, we'll use the friendly wave generator. So we'll come in here, and once again, we can do a new path connection. We'll come over here and connect to the path. This toy, however, does not have the same limitation as the friend generator. So we can go ahead and connect this up to that locator. And now we'll come into the friendly wave generator and configure the wave. And just like the friend generator, we need an actual townsperson. And so I'll come down here. Let's see if Snow White is close at hand. There she is. So we'll add her. Come down to the properties. I'm going to take the generation delay down to zero. Everything else is fine. And now, whereas we had the movement style in the generated friend options under the friend generator, that's not here in this one. Instead, we have toy box path. So I'll select that. And you can set the speed of her here. And you can also set the movement style. And once again, we'll come down and do one way and delete. And now we'll connect up our button. New logic connection when pressed to the friendly wave generator and we'll generate the wave. Okay, let's see how that works. So there she is. And she's just wandering around. <laughs> And you're thinking, why didn't that work? That should have worked. Well, there's one more step. Again, the friendly wave generator works a little bit differently. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop down another button because I need to reset this toy. And I'll drop this right here next to the other one. <laughs> Starting to run a little low on resources here. Okay, so we'll connect this one up. New logic connection when pressed. And come over here and delete, defeat the wave. And we'll go ahead and take Snow White out of here. Okay, so just generating the friend, oops, isn't quite enough. There's one more thing you need to do. And so for that, we're going to use a time delayer because once you generate the friend after they're generated you have to tell them to walk the path and you have to wait until they're actually in the toy box and so I'm going to use the time delayer and I'm gonna set the delay on this because one second probably isn't gonna be enough three should be okay we'll set a three second delay on that so on our button, I'm going to do a new logic connection. When pressed, come over to the time delayer, start the delay. And on the time delayer, we'll do a new logic connection. When the delay is completed, we'll come to the friendly wave generator. And there's a new option down here called toy box path. I'm going to select that and we can say start. And that will tell Snow White to start walking the path. So now pushing the button with the friendly wave generator does two things. First, it generates the wave, and then three seconds later, after it's kicked off the time delayer, it'll tell her to walk the path. So let's see what happens now. So there she is. And now the time delayer has gone off, and she turns around and walks back to the start of the path. And now she's walking the path. And so now we've got her connected to the path, walking the path, 
and she's actually starting at a locator where we want her to start and not at the creativitoy that created her. And so that works out pretty well. The downside, of course, to using the generator, oh, well, hey, one more <laughs> problem, as you see. She didn't actually delete, even though that was what I set the mov movement to be. And that's easy enough, because we can come over here and do a new logic connection on this point. When the point is reached by the object on the path, we can come back over here to the friendly wave generator and defeat the wave. So now let's try that again. <laughs> okay, there she is. And now she turns around, walks the path. Let's see what happens when she gets to the end of it down here now. <laughs> Probably should have left the speed on that path set to 100. And it didn't work either. <laughs> well, alrighty then. This worked earlier. I'm going to go offline and take a look at this, and I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, well, <laughs> I can't get that thing to work. She just will not delete when she reaches the end of that path. And uh, I tried connecting up to the path point at the end so that when the object on the path reaches this point, I would try to defeat the wave and that didn't work. I tried connecting that to a time delayer and defeating the wave and that didn't work. But uh, one thing you can do, and this is kind of a hack, but this will work at least, is we can drop down a trigger area over that point. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. If you can't get it to work right the first time, then you just go ahead and tweak it and find another way. Fortunately, <laughs> this is such a powerful tool, the uh, toy box I mean, that you can find ways to actually make this work the way you want. I'll go ahead and do, uh, well, let's see, I'll put it there. And on the trigger area, we'll do a new logic connection when entered by AI friend. We'll come over to our friend generator, our friendly wave generator, and defeat the wave. And so now, as we push this button, And she turns and walks the path. And again, I probably should have set that path speed to 100. But that's a good walking speed she's using, so I like that. But now when she gets down here to the end of the path, she'll intersect that trigger area. And now she's gone. So there's a workaround anyway. <laughs> it's kind of crazy, but yeah, you get the idea. So that's how you can connect townspeople to paths. Next week we'll return to our Fantasia toy box and I'll show you how to connect enemies to paths. It's a similar process, but there are some different options and it doesn't quite work the same way. So I want to make sure I cover that for you. Until then, thank you for watching and thank you to all of my subscribers for your comments and support. If you're not a subscriber yet, all you have to do is click the follow button on my blog or my picture in the lower right corner of this video, and that way you won't miss any of my videos. For now, Mickey and I are signing off, and we'll see you next time.